What is going on, Crypto Fiends? Robert Tiller here. Today, we have a juicy, juicy news episode for you guys talking about a lot of exciting stuff happening in the space. Uh, before we jump into anything, don't you hate it when you record an entire video and then the audio is all messed up? That's the absolute best. So, yes, this is my second time recording this video, but I am so excited because I love cryptocurrencies and so do you. That's why you're watching this video. Nonetheless, let's jump right into things. So, first off, we are going to be looking at the cryptocurrency space. Uh, cryptocurrencies are doing okay right now. They're moving relatively sideways. Yesterday, we did experience a little bit of a dip across the board for the majority of altcoins, uh, but Bitcoin is still holding its gains around 5200 hundred and twenty five dollars um so what i really want to point out to you guys is first off we've accumulated around 30 billion dollars in the past week in cryptocurrencies which is muy bien uh and then with the 24 hour volume this is something i feel like not not enough not enough people appreciate um our 24 hour volume is record breaking right now and it, we don't know where it's coming from it could be wash trading but in the grand scheme of things it's money flowing in and out and all around cryptocurrencies and that's what we want to see um so i just want to look at this a little bit better um and point out when we experienced that pretty big dip or i'm sorry that pretty big big spike up about seven days ago um the amount of volume that we were seeing so we were on the average we were trending around 33 billion dollars a day in 24 hour volume but when we spiked we hit an astonishing 90 billion something dollars we'll say 88 billion dollars in 24 hour volume which is record breaking so let me emphasize how record breaking that is if we go over to um all-time high season in january of 2018 uh as you guys can see i'm gonna go through this whole trend this was january 8th 9th 10th 11th the days we were at all-time highs we hit all-time highs on the 7th i believe um, as you guys can see, we didn't get really anywhere close to $90 billion. We hit around 70 something, but nowhere near $90 billion in 24 hour volume. So what does this tell us? This tells us that money is flowing in and out of cryptocurrencies. Money is starting to become liquid again, and it's making moves, it's making positions. And this is what we want to see. The majority of wallets that were not moving for the entire bear market is are becoming awake and uh, money is flowing in and out so in the grand scheme of things this is a huge huge deal and i just wanted to show that to you guys and emphasize how important 24 hour volume is um so that's where we currently stand now by no means am i an expert chartist or analyst or data analytics expert or whatever you want to call it by no means am i an expert uh, but i do follow a handful of experts and a lot of experts are thinking uh, that we are in for a little bit of a correction uh, right now we are seeing a lot of resistance on uh, bitcoin at around fifty two hundred dollars uh, and we could see a little bit of a correction between the ranges of forty nine hundred to forty six hundred dollars now of course nothing's ever guaranteed in the crypto space but that is something to keep in mind so if you are looking into buying the dip um, that could be a good range to consider jumping on in and buying the dip personally for me i do have a um a little stack of fiat currency on standby so when we do experience a dip which i really hope we do uh, i'm hoping we do get to forty six hundred dollars i will be entering in a position now could it not happen to the simple factor that everyone is going to be buying the dip that's very possible but of course we will just have to wait and see um, so that's where we currently stand with the market not too much going on but in the grand scheme, very, very good for the past week. So our first news article today, and something that's uh, pretty, it's a big deal. It's a really big deal. A crypto blessing. China plans to ban Bitcoin mining, and it will work wonders. What? The National Development and Reforms Commission revealed its intent to eliminate the Bitcoin and cryptocurrency mining sector immediately in its guidance for adjustments to industrial structure published on April 1st. The list of sectors that will be encouraged, restricted, and eliminated will undergo a public consultation period until May 7th, according to the report 
of SCMP and as such mining facilities in China are likely to be able to operate throughout the next month or two. If after the public consultation phase the NDRC and the government of China move forward with the current plans to shut down the Bitcoin and crypto mining sector it would signal the end of most dominant Bitcoin mining region. Why it could be a good thing for Bitcoin and crypto? The potential imposition of a ban on crypto mining may lead to the, de the decentralization of mining across the globe uh, of the mining market and encourage miners based in China to move to foreign countries. Bitcoin mining will no longer be dominated by China, but become more decentralized. For many years, major mining pools based in China in the likes of BTC.com and Antpool, some of which are operated by Bitmain, have had dominance over the hash power of the Bitcoin network. As of April 9th, BTC.com and Antpool alone have over 31.5% of the hash power of the Bitcoin network, both of which are subsidiaries of Bitmain. However, it is difficult to exactly determine what percentages of Bitcoin hash power comes from China because pools represent a large group of miners uh, possibly distributed globally. Um, so moreover, most mining companies, including Bitmain, have offices outside of Beijing and if forced out of China, most likely would be able to sustain operations in foreign countries. Um, so why China is taking this approach possibly? Kinetic managing partner Jehan Xu said that similar to the way China has been able to control what's known as the Great Firewall of China, the government likely wants to reboot the cryptocurrency industry to how it sees fit so this is some big stuff guys so pretty much the chinese government is possibly possibly going to be banning mining um in uh, of bitcoin and cryptocurrencies in china um so it's not guaranteed right now but they are looking into it and most likely it is going to be happening uh so what they really emphasize right here of why this is kind of a big deal is that 31.5 percent could of, of mining could potentially be in china and it's very very possible we know china is a very large country um and uh, btc.com and ampool are are based there as well uh, now they can't necessarily confirm this exact percentage because um users that users on btc.com and ampool could also be distributed all throughout the globe so it's not just guaranteed to china although they definitely do have a large percent maybe around 20 to 25 percent but of course we won't know the uh, specific numbers uh, they also go on to discuss that the majority of these corporations that do run uh, mining farms will most likely just relocate to another uh, cryptocurrency friendly mining country cryptocurrency friendly cryptocurrency mining friendly country um, and they shouldn't have any issues. But for the majority of small individuals, uh, you will definitely have to stop your mining uh, routines and uh, comply with the, the government's laws. So why they could definitely be doing this, there's only one thing, one thing I could personally think of is China is known to want to control. Uh, they're a very centralized country. Um, and we know this based on, you know, the, the Chinese firewall when it comes to their internet. They have their own form of Google. They have their own form of social media platforms. They are not, the, the citizens are not allowed to see what goes on out in the rest of the world. Um, so this is a big thing that they're probably wanting to tackle right now is cryptocurrency mining because, of course, it's a global sector. Um, so why I could see them wanting to do this, not necessarily to completely ban cryptocurrencies as a whole, but specifically mining right now because they want to control the market. If they're able to ban all of cryptocurrency mining and then maybe in a year unban it with some regulation, then, then, then they can establish grounds of these are the regulations and they could also get documentation of who's mining, what corporations are mining, how many mining rigs they have, what's their input, what their output, uh, the amount of money they could potentially be making in cryptocurrencies, all that sort of stuff, even maybe addresses, all that sort of stuff. Now, obviously, that's going to be really hard to track in the cryptocurrency space, uh, but that is the main reason I think they want to do this is because they're trying to tackle the problem before it gets too large um, and they want to control it the best that they can. 
So I don't think China is going to ban cryptocurrencies as a whole because they would definitely be stabbing themselves in the back uh, to potentially making a lot of money for themselves in the future uh, through this new market uh, and the technology. But uh, that's what I personally think they are planning on doing. So it is not confirmed as of right now. We will get some more information within the next two months uh, because as they say, um, if they do go through with it, uh, the majority of these mining farms will be able to continue throughout May. So uh, I will keep you guys updated with any further announcements on this. So next up, Meet the Sun Network. Tron has been bo booming the past day. Justin Sun recently took to Twitter to cheeringly announce the establishment of the Sun Network Venture, a second layer solution for smart contract centric Tron blockchain. According to the Ripple alumnus who attended Jack Ma's Hoopin University, uh, the Sun Network solution could allow Tron's transactional throughput to increase by 100x. 100x, that's pretty pretty incredible. Um, so the Sun Network isn't exactly as simple single faced layered to advancement. Instead, this network will consist of DAP side chains, cross chain infrastructures to promote interoperability and some other expansion projects. The cumulative effect of these innovations will as per the Tron Foundation, increase the overall transaction speed and smart contract efficiency of efficiency of Tron. The DAP side chains themselves were purportedly allow Tron to run smart contracts with extremely low energy consumption, high security, and efficiency. Funnily enough, the potential improvements uh, weren't explicitly quantified, leaving it to anyone's guess as to how the Sun Network will benefit Tron over the long haul. But we will soon see how the Sun Network plays out as Tron intends to launch a test stage DAP chain by May 30th, a fully fledged DAP chain by August 10th, and an upgraded version uh, just 30 days later. So we will have to see if Justin Sun can keep his word and get uh, this platform out by the dates that he says. May 30th, not too long from now, about, well, about 45, 50 days from now. So we will just have to see. Tron, is definitely, Tron has definitely been killing it across the board with their development. I don't care what anyone says. And they have the most users right now. Um, out of the majority of the DAP platform. So uh, very impressive stuff coming over from Tron and we will just have to see uh, in the near future. So next up and lastly, Facebook said to be seeking $1 billion in funding for crypto project. Now, this is something we've known about for quite some time now, so I don't wanna just repeat myself, but uh, this is some relatively new news and some new information that we haven't heard of. So we know that the social media giant Facebook is planning on launching their own stable coin. Uh, they want to launch it on the WhatsApp um, a messaging platform, which is massive, and as well as Facebook and potentially Instagram in the future. Um, this stable coin will most likely be used for maybe ad services, being able to pay for ads as well as uh, marketplaces maybe and sending funds over Messenger to your friends and family, stuff like that. Um, but they are potentially, uh, supposedly, I should say, this isn't confirmed, unfortunately, that they want to raise $1 billion in funding from uh, retail investors. Uh, I'm sorry, from venture capitalists, not retail investors. Um, uh, there's no specific reason that comes to mind why they would need the $1 billion unless they want um, their overall cryptocurrency to appear to be more decentralized. If you get some venture capitalists involved, it seems that uh, you know they want the overall stablecoin experience to seem like, okay, it's everyone's coin. Everyone's being involved with it. Although we do know it's going to be a centralized cryptocurrency. Um, we also have Barclays analyst Ross Sandler's estimates that Facebook cryptocurrency project could yield anywhere from $3 billion to $19 billion in additional revenue by 2021. I think personally it will be worth way, way more than $19 billion by 2021. And that's pretty much just basing it off of if we continue the same market trend that we're experiencing right now. That's not playing into fact if we do have a massive bull run that this figure is going to change drastically, drastically, especially by 2021. But regardless, even if we did look at the current market, $19 billion puts it at rank number two above Ethereum. And uh, realistically, I could definitely see that happening. 
not coming number one by no means. Um, but if we do have a massive bull run and stable, uh, Facebook coin is in the market at the time on exchanges, um, I could definitely see it within maybe the top five cryptocurrencies uh, just to the simple factor that it will be used kind of as the U.S. Uh, currency, the U.S. dollar stable coin around the world. And it will be such an easy and beneficial stable coin, in my opinion. I know a lot of people like to bash on stable coins and a lot of these centralized companies jumping in like JP Morgan coin, stuff like that. And I get it completely, but with Facebook coin, I think it's going to be really different uh, to the simple factor that yes, they're bringing in a stable coin and we already have a bunch of other stable coins. So it doesn't really benefit the majority of cryptocurrency enthusiasts already in the space, but this is going to be pretty much a huge billboard for cryptocurrencies saying, hey, we are in cryptocurrencies, you should look into it and get involved. And especially if Facebook coin is going to be launched on exchanges like Binance may probably Coinbase off the bat, whatever, etc. Um, this is going to be massive, massive cryptocurrency for cryptocurrencies and help adoption greatly. I wouldn't be surprised if we see a huge wave of new investors come within the next couple months of the stablecoin uh, being released to the simple factor that they will have exposure to cryptocurrencies and they'll want to learn about it. So um, I think Facebook coin is going to be phenomenal for the space uh, and really help bring cryptocurrencies into everyday life. So it is just a matter of time of when they release their first their, uh, their stable coin, they are planning to release it in the first half of 2019. So we do have a couple more months uh, before it's supposedly supposed to be launched, but very, very soon, guys, I'm telling you, the market is looking so, so juicy right now, so sweet. And if we just have Facebook stable coin jump into the middle of all it, I'm telling you, we are going to see a parabolic bull run that we've never seen before. I am telling you. Now, of course, none of this is financial advice. Don't sue me uh, but this is all my own opinion I think this year for cryptocurrencies this is the year where we really see some um, growth in the overall industry not just the price movement but the overall industry and really get a, a solid ground of where we stand as an overall sector and uh, really break the boundaries when it comes to uh, you know the financial industry as well. So let me know down below what you guys think about all this news I know I rambled on a little bit too long um, But if you did find this video informative and you're not a part of the community hit that subscribe button and the little bell So you can get notified uh, when videos are posted Also, if you did enjoy this video, I would greatly greatly appreciate a thumbs up on this video Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next